Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to Football Manager 20, our climbing the ladder journeyman save. This is episode 19 with our third club. And we are ending the season today. However, before we get to the final two matches, I have done something that I wasn't going to do. But I really didn't have a choice because I was fearful. I was afraid. And uh, I panicked. I gave in. I gave in to temptation. So what do I talk? What am I talking about? Well, these 15 league games, we talked about this last episode. We were using our 352 tactic, and we went six wins, three draws, six losses, and a plus four goal differential. I switched over to the 442 tactic with the two deep lying midfielders. And we used that for eight matches. All right. So we used that up through here. We didn't do badly. So we won 3 1. So this is, and you guys saw some of these. We played Odds and Ham, or Ham Cam and uh, Jean Dalen uh, last episode. Then we had a couple of draws and a 2 1 loss. So at that point, I was like, eh. And I said, you know what? One of our viewers. And I'm, uh, I'm not throwing you under the bus. I swear to God, that is not the intent. But one of my viewers, one of uh, my your fellow subscribers, I hope he's a subscriber. Um, let's see, notifications. Uh, Jeremy, Bessie. So Jeremy's been making a lot of comments. And I said, you know what? Jeremy has been extra active. So I'm going to go in, read all of his answers, which I had done, but I said, I'm going to look at the tactic. I'm going to read the answers. And I said, we're going to, we're going to see about making some changes, right? So we came back for three matches. So I made some of the changes that Jeremy talked about in his comments and Jeremy, I, I hope I did it right. First match was a three, one loss to a club we should have beaten. And Early goals, early goals, and then, a, uh, you know, just icing on the cake. A 1-0 loss. Again, this was a game we probably should have won. And then we got drummed 4-0 to Oslo. Now, we had only lost to them 2-1 before. So this was just three bad losses in a row. And, I, and, and honestly, we were drifting down the table. We probably weren't going to get relegated, but I panicked because I was going to see his tactic out through the end of the season. And I said, can't do it, can't do it. So I went in, I went back to our 4-4-2, and we won 3-1. And then at this point, I said, okay, I said, I gave that the run of, of, you know, eight games, and now nine. And we ended up with four wins, three losses, two draws, right? And we had a plus eight goal differential in those, in those games. So actually not a bad run. Still three losses, still only playing, you know, in American uh, language. We played 500 ball, right? You know, equal wins, equal losses for the most part. So I went over to the tactics uh, forum over at uh, SI, and I dug into Knapp, uh, into, his, into his thread. And one of the things Knapp did is, and let me see if I can find this, because I actually want to show it to you, because it's actually really cool. Uh, right here. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring what's that? All right, I'm gonna bring this over. So bear with me here. All right, there we go. All right, so here's his list. Now this is something he I you know that I had kind of brought up and some I said, man, you know you got all these things and then you know you you've got uh, 114 pages of comments. I said, there's no way to keep up with this, you know? And, you know, I liked it before we actually kept individual threads and then you could see which ones were most active because they were the first in the forum list. But, but this is nice. Well, he actually does his own testing and then he has other people test too. So he said, I'm looking at Google Docs to, you know, to, to help out because I think it was on page 105 that he had done some type of breakdown. And I said, dude, 10, page 105, you know, I can't get there on purpose. I've got to, you know, I've got to, you know, take 
just click, 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 click just to get there. So he said, yeah, I'm working on a Google Doc. So here's the Google Doc. So it has all of his tactics. And then you have the group here in yellow and a group in green that did testing. And they're basically played out in order of overall rank based on, looks like the green independent test two. And he says in the thread who they're by, uh, Mr. L and FM base. So I'm guessing this is FM base and this is Mr. L. Just a thought. So what I really like, because he didn't have this before, and if you don't care about this, fast forward, but he actually added in, so like overall rank. Well, that was kind of given, but then all of this is kind of, what exactly does that mean? So he typically tests with the top ranked club, Liverpool, Man United, Man City, uh, in the Premier League. Um, I would like to see some testing done with lower leagues because a lot of people play lower league, not just with the top premier clubs in England. But that's just me. Um, so, but this actually helped out a little bit because now I can see top rank and this is top. So middle rank and, and middle points. So I went down through here and the sympathy for the devil is the 4-2-2-2 that we've been playing. And it's the number two with a mid-level premier team. Scored 114 points, which is pretty high. Probably number two uh, in, in, in going that direction. I said, what's the number one? Well, it's this one called Venom and Faith. It's also a 4-4-2. And what this means, if you're not sure, he played 101 games and was in the FA Cup. And, uh, and then this guy tested it. It was overall number 13, but and number 27. So I said, well, you know, but over here it was number one. Let's give it a go. Because I had already tried the Sympathy for the Devil, which is number four. Oh, wait. Oh, it's Northern Soul, but that's a 5-3-2. Anyway, um, I'm going to come in. And I've also tried the Sicilian and did not have good good success with it. So I said, let me look over here. So I, I tried the Venom and Faith. All right, so having said that, we won the first match with that 6-2. to two. Now, Skeed is in relegation, but they were actually favorites for this game as the home team. Magnus and our striker scored four goals. It was wonderful. Safarth scored a goal, center back, and even Nilsson ended his scoring drought in the 86th minute. So anyway, we have two matches left. We're going to use this tactic to see out the season. Where are we at? Well, we've climbed back up to eighth position. Now, here's what I want you to think about. After 15 games, we were sitting on 21 points. So we have played 13 more games, and we've only gained 16 points. So we can actually finish one point up from the first half of the season with our first tactic, that 3-5-2, if we win both matches. And way too early to make a decision on this tactic, but we were the underdogs. Um, what's the tactic look like? Well, first off, I do want to show you all the tactics. Okay, so I've taken out the 3-5-2 that we were using, but it was here. This is the 4-4-2 that we used last season. This is that Sympathy for the Devil. And, um, and we did okay last year. I mean, we stayed up. We finished in the mid. And we went three wins, two draws, and three losses with this tactic in eight matches after the midpoint of this season. This is Jeremy's tactic. At least I think it was. So we were playing a 4-4-2 very similar to this, right? And he suggested, now these aren't the same players, keep that in mind. I want to look up the right stuff. And again, if you're not interested in this, forward ahead. But look, Jeremy took the time to respond. I feel I need to take the time to respond as well and let him know what, what I did, right? Um, what I tried. Make sure he and I are on the same page, okay? So that's all this is for. So, you know, we talked a little bit back and forth uh, about the, you know, the, the uh, 
one striker tactic. And I said, I really want to play two strikers. So he said, all right. So he said, with two strikers, he suggested um, that, you know, and I had added some strikers, right? I had like four or five. He said, go with two strikers, but I would take one of your two central midfielders out for the second striker. Because remember, we were back here, right? So take one of those guys out and put him up top. And then use the leave one central midfielder and then play the other guy as a box to box or a, I'm sorry, a ball winning midfielder. Now, he didn't really say on support, but he said, you know, a defensive mid. And he said, you can play him on either side, you know, so we could have rotated these guys. Really wouldn't have mattered, right? He also suggested you putting the, uh, the uh, wing backs on fullback automatic, right? Because they were, you know, they were, uh, what was his comment? Your new fullbacks, some of your new fullbacks can pass and cross. So put them on fullback on automatic. And then when you play with the two strikers, switch your wingers to support and also go in and have them shoot less, which I, which I did. It's on green there. So I did set them to shoot less, uh, which put more up top. So anyway, that's what I did. Three bad losses, however. So not that it's not a good tactic, not that it won't work. Um, I, I see what you're trying to do, but I panicked at oh and you know at o o and three, and you know like I said we were drifting down. We were about let's see we had gone all the way down to tenth position, and I was like eh, and so I said yeah we need to we need to do something here, and so I pulled the new tactic out. We went back to the old tactic and uh, won, and then we got the win with the new tactic. So we're currently up in eighth position. We've secured ourselves above relegation. So what I could do is I could play that tactic, and we might do that. Who do we play today? Who do we play? Oh, well, I'm already on the screen. So we play Sandnez, their second, and then we play Elson, which is fourth. Probably not the best to try out tactics on but hey um we've never beat them tell you what for this one we're going to use the current tactic the new tactic that, that i just brought in we're home we're underdogs i am going to go with that one it's called venom and faith it's a 442 we have a box to box a deep line playmaker two wingers and uh let's, you know what i do wonder I think it would be a good idea to put shoot less often on those guys, but I don't have anybody in the midfield that can shoot well. So uh, anyway, we'll leave it as it stands. Again, a lot of these tactics from Nap are supposed to be plug and play. Uh, Middleton is suspended. Oren and, oh God, we signed a new guy. He's Albanian, Sabri Leshi. I knew I was going to try this either, either this 4-4-2 or that one with fullbacks, right? So I signed this guy. He's not bad. He has good first touch. He has good marking, tackling. He can pass the ball. He can cross the ball. He was an upgrade at right back. He played one match, and he broke his foot in the game, and he's out for the rest of the season. Yeah. My luck, right? My luck. And of course, we're outside the transfer window. So guess who can't play? Uh, yeah, that would be that would be correct. Um, this guy's allowed 42, only five shutouts. Now he allowed 51 last year, so I still think the other guy's a good upgrade. Oh, and what did I tell you last episode? I went on I, I went day to day for like three weeks nothing. I went on vacation for six days. They offered me a two-year contract extension. And it gets automatically accepted because you're on vacation. I have a feeling if you got a job offer, even when you were on vacation, it would not be automatically accepted. Just a thought. Just a thought. All right, so Nilsson's in with the injuries and suspensions and whatnot. Again, this is the new 442 tactic. Morale's actually not bad with a couple of wins here real quick. 
So we'll see how this goes. All right, we are in red, of course. Oh, through ball, Nilsson. Oh, he almost snuck it past the keeper in the early going. Nine minutes in, and we had a shot on target. All right, that one's squared in. Oh, there it goes. Lopez, first goal of the season. Now, he was a uh, midfielder, I think our right winger, uh, at the last transfer window. So he hasn't been with the club a, a long time. I did notice in the last match with this tactic, a lot of set pieces, a lot of crosses in, and there were a lot of these like little deflections and our guys just getting in there fighting for the ball, man. Just, just, you know, right place, right time. Real nice. Real nice. In fact, that game that we, that last match that we scored six goals, uh, kind of, I think three of them were, were very similar to that. All right. That one's over the top headed down. Good. All right. Hawkins. Oh, that's not good. All right. Good defensive header. Now, there's something different about this tactic that I have not, uh, that none of the other tactics have done. So they are playing an offsides trap, but instead of playing it with the very high line, they're playing with a very low line. Uh, it's, it's pretty far back. Um, in fact, we can take a look at that real quick just so you guys see what I'm talking about. So it's actually a lower. So it's one notch back from standard. So I don't know. I, you know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's different, right? It is different. All right. So we had another shot there. Went wide. A nice first touch by Vestum. That was a bad angle, I'm thinking. All right. Yeah. Olison watched it go wide of the mark. All right, we do have a nervous player. Sue picks up a yellow. About a third of the way through the first quarter. Oh, that was dangerous. Offsides, thank goodness. I'm going to tell them to concentrate. They're just, they just let that ball get through the gap. They're overwhelmed. Oh, my God. All right, Safarth into Nilsson. Nilsson, too heavy a touch. He loses it. All right, that one's lumped out. Oh, my defender just stood there and watched the ball. Got a little lag there. All right, Lopez, he gets to it. Magnuson turns the corner. He's into the box, and his shot goes wide of the mark. Would have been a little better serve to maybe... You know, lighter touch on that or more of a cross. Just, you know. All right. We've got uh, equal shots. All right. This is my wife calling about the dog, I think. So hold on a sec. Hello. Yes, you took it off this morning. All right. Bye. All right. So let's get to the dressing room. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, they're playing well. They're playing well. I need you to watch your yellows. 6766, 164. So, you know, I mean, look, lower league. I mean, I know a lot of times you watch some of these upper leagues and the guys say, well, anything below a seven. And I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I can't chew out a player unless it's below a six, right? <laughs> Oh, I think he's time wasting there. Oh, by the way, oh, Balterson. Oh, trip down. Hello, and he's going to be sent off. Yeah, that's a sending off. All right, so we're a man up now with 45 minutes to go, and we got nothing off of that. Uh, I was watching uh, Loki's episode that came out today, and uh, he had a goal. <laughs> He had a goal scored the same way I have where the keeper had the ball comes out and then goes to kick it and it hits the marking striker in the face and goes into the goal on a deflection. I think that is 
the most ridiculous. Oh, look at that. Two. Yes, he puts it in. Nilsson fights for that one. And that's what I saw. At least three of our goals were just like that uh, last match. So, yeah, you start getting some bounces, uh, attacks off the keeper. That's brilliant. I love it. I love it. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we, uh, so he had a goal like that scored, and I was like, yeah, I saw one of those. So the fact that that's happened for multiple people is kind of crazy, right? Yeah, Valterson, that's where I think maybe that uh, shoot less often would uh, would be a good shout for those wingers. I'm really looking forward to next season. Um, I am going to resign, uh, even though we got the two-year extension. Oh, crap. Woo! Wide of the mark. All right, let's uh, get creative. All right, Sue drops it off. Valterson into the box. Run, get the ball. Over the top, Magnuson. Oh, he almost got it past the keeper. Oh, good run by Sue to come back to intercept that ball. Oh, he's taken down. Oh, looks like they called in. Yep, he called an advantage. Wait a minute. Now you got to call the ball back because we didn't get the advantage at all. Come on. A real referee would have done that. All right. While they're still out here, I want to make a move. All right. Jimmy. You know what? Does he, He's got pace. Yeah. We're going to move Bergenheim back to Jimmy's spot for the playmaker with the passing. And then we are going to bring on dribbling, passing. What's his numbers look? Yeah, he can pass pretty well too. So yeah, we're going to bring him in for Sue on the yellow card. And then I'm going to bring hmm I'm going to bring Uraga on for Stomparud. And then Uraga, if I need to make that move, he can go up to Bergenheim's place as the deep line playmaker. Because he can play defensive mid. Actually, uh, yeah, no, I'd probably move. Yeah, no, I can't do that. Oh, well. We'll go that route. It is what it is. All right, Nilsson with the interception there. All right, we move it around. Let's give him a spot of praise. 12 to 8. Six chances to zero. That's incredible. All right, let's do a third time-wasting sub, maybe. Um, I could move Safarth over to the right. And then we could bring Orsith in. Let's do that. I've gone ahead. I've still signed some players. I mean, I'm still making moves for next season to try to improve the team. I haven't given up on trying to leave him in a in a better spot. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, Nilsson breaks it through. Oh, off the woodwork. It's going to be strange him not leading the club this year. He has carried us the last two seasons in goal scoring. And I will apologize. This uh this episode will go a little long mainly because of the all the stuff at the beginning. 2-0, guys. I'm 15 to nine, seven chances to zero possession advantage. I'm going to call that a win. And that was against a pretty good side that, that, you know, we had never beaten. All right. So what I'm going to do next match, uh, let's see, appreciate the efforts. Well, we'll talk about the next match when I come back. See you guys right back. All right, well, we're back. I came back just a little bit early. Hey, I won October Boss of the Month. Yay. Uh, general Manager has is pleased with that. And we actually got a player. in. We, we don't get many players in the, in the team of the week. You ever notice that? Oh, well. Uh, let's see. We're going to criticize this guy. He's an idiot. He's been wanting playing time. All right. Uh, we are... So Anselin's is pick to win big time uh let's see healthy number of fullbacks now that doesn't matter we're not going to be around for that anyway 
All right, so we are safely up. Uh, we were already safely up, but I wanted to... So we played the harder team, right? With the new tactic. So I want to go back now. We're on the road. Pretty heavy underdogs. So we're going to go and use Jeremy's tactic. And just like always, we're going to pick our best side. Our right back is suspended, so that, that doesn't do us any favors. He's injured and unread because I had to, I, I unregistered him. <sighs> Hawkins would start, but he's out. You know what? Stomperud's actually better there. Let's put Stomperud there, move Safarth back inside. I think that helps us a little bit. And now on this one, again, this is following uh, Jeremy's suggestions. We have it for the wingers to shoot less often. So that should set these guys up to shoot more. And Yuranga is a ball-winning midfielder. He can't pass very well. But again, he's not, he's not a playmaker. He's just to win the ball. He's almost a defensive midfielder just to get rid of the ball. So... Hopefully I've set this up the way you were talking about, Jeremy, and I'm sitting here pointing at the camera like you can see me, but I've taken my picture off the off the page. So just know I was pointing at the camera like, I hope I'm, I'm doing this the way you were talking about. But uh, fullbacks on automatic, wingers shoot less, uh, move one of the central, the defensive mids up to central mid, have a ball winning midfielder. Let's do it and see what happens. I mean, we had a run of three games, and at three games, I did admittedly panic. We're going to encourage the players. So, we'll see. Hopefully, I don't panic at halftime. No promises. They're parking the bus, man. They've got a 4-1-4. <laughs> Can we put 10 players in the back half of the field and put them all? Whoa. I got to figure out why it's doing that. I could swear I, I've checked that several times. All right, we've got the chance, equal shots, no highlights. So, so far, I'm not as unhappy with it as I was. Oh, well, that was just kind of a giveaway, right? And there's the old deflected kick right into the path of the attacker. Oh, those are always nice. Those are always nice. All right, head it out. Good job. Bergenheim gets to the ball, brings it upfield, crosses the midfield line. He's in space. He's, he holds it up, and that had to have taken a deflection because I don't think he would have kicked it straight. Sure enough, it's a corner. Valterson lines up, drives it into the box, right into the forehead of the first uh, defender. I see uh, Calvin Phillips do that with leads all the time, right into the forehead of the first defender. Frustrating. All right, so let's see. Uh, Rasmussen has lost possession. He's won back more possession, and he's been impressive. Only three shots, one shot on target, 13 total fouls, and... And, you know, possession's not horrible, right? All right, so we appreciate you. Give them greens. No yellow cards, so that's that's actually positive. All right, let's tell them to get creative. First shot of the game for us. All right, we've equaled up on shots, but only one of five on target. Now, they've in, generated two chances to R1. All right, we're a little over our sub. Uh, but it is the last match of the season. Yeah. Mid left. Really don't have anybody else to put over there, do I? And I don't want to put in... 
All right, Orsith is nort nervous. Let's let's bring him off for Akinola. Now remember, just again taking a quick look at the tactic. So we are playing the higher line, but no offsides trap, and we had taken off tighter marking and get stuck in. Um, I think I'm going to put tighter marking on, just because I like that. And Sean, another viewer, actually a friend of mine, uh, he says to leave the get stuck in off. Now, we had tried that last season, and it just didn't help us in the least. All right, Bergenheim, back to Stomperud. Into the box. No. Nope. Knudsen brings it out. He lumps it over the top. Abadale guard. Not sure if that was a shot or if our defender flicked it away. Either way, good job by our by our back there. Oh my god, another route one right into the keeper. I think that was an offsides. I'm thinking. All right, let's do a time wasting here. Uh Valterson. He can play mid center. Bergenheim can play mid right, which is where he's at. But I'm thinking he could probably play there. And then we'll bring, let's bring Lopez on. And you know what? Didn't he have, he had a bunch of goals, did he not? He doesn't have great finishing, but it's not horrible. But Diego Romero's our better finisher. Let's bring him up top. Let's bring him on for Nilsson. All right, Akinola out to Valterson. Into Sue. Deep to Rasmussen. There's the cross. He was offsides. No? No? Eh? Magnuson, number 16. Oh, I thought he was offsides. All right, we're going to go with it. We'll take the goal. All right, there's our changes. All right, we're going to get a win here. Well, ooh, I spoke too soon. I don't, please don't. God, I jinxed it. Oh, my God, I jinxed it. Here's a shot from 800 yards. Oh, I thought that was top bins. Oh, my God. <laughs> Where's my anxiety pill? Oh, my God, there was a freaking penalty. In the 95th minute. I did jinx it. Shit. Shit. Damn it. Crap. I don't want to watch that fucking shit again. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Much better performance. Much better performance. So I guess we can't write that off completely, but... Equal shots, 40% on target. I wish that was higher. Three chances to five for them. That's troubling. Everything else is all right. All right, yeah, we appreciate the efforts into the season. Yeah, yeah. All right, we finish in eighth. So we started in eighth when we, after 15 games. We went through three different tactics down the second half of the season, and we still finish in eighth position. We had 21 points in the first half with the first tactic. We end up with 21 points with the other three tactics combined, um, but only one point from from uh, your tactic. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't know. We finished in good form. I do like that other tactic, though. We've gotten some really good results. All right, let's get to, 
our best ever uh, Obos League and finish, right? So that's good. We were actually in fourth at one point. So we should only be a day or two away from the uh, end of season award. So I'll come right back for that. And then we'll talk about the future. So don't go anywhere. Feel forward to skip ahead if you just want to see that. But I'm going to edit this part out. So we'll be back with the end of season awards and then talk about uh, where we're going to go. Well, that didn't take long. In fact, I'm probably not going to edit it out because it was the very next freaking day. All right. So worst discipline, 101 yellow cards and five reds. Previous was 98 and five set last year by our esteemed club. Does that give me the reputation as a dirty manager? Just wondering. I'm asking for a friend. All right, best 11. End of season awards. Joel Valterson, 34%. Diego Romero, goal of the season. Signing of the season was Diego Romero. And he was the young player of the season. Notice who's not in there is our former leading scorer. Uh, season review. Uh, biggest win was a 2-0 win over Jean Dalen. Uh, November 5th, that was just a couple of days ago. And uh, last game of the, no, that was the win with the new tactic. And a moment to forget, that was, uh, actually that was May 11th. That was early in the season. That was with the first tactic. And then this was September 26th. I believe this was, uh, well, I don't want to say. Uh, so anyway, initial budgets, 100000 and 74000 It's not going to matter. Club vision, not going to matter. Squad dynamics, we'll go in and look at that real quick. They're on an end of season break. Uh, dynamics, cohesion got to average. A lot of turnover. I signed a lot of freaking players with this club. Locker room was good. Leadership support was excellent at the high end. We have no team leaders because, again, I got rid of all of them. Uh, we have 24 players that support me, no opposition, and only two players, and uh, Romero's new, I think, midseason, Stomperud, was uh, beginning of the season, no opinion. Not bad, not bad. I really wish I would have made my, my coach younger, but I don't think there's a mandatory retirement age, so we'll, we'll go to 70 years old, right? Uh, what else do we want to look at? Um, hello? Hello. There we go. All right. Brought in 81 players. Sold 29. Longest time at a club was 1,251 days. That's the current job. Shortest time. That was when we got fired. Job history. So again, remember, we got fired by Dunstable Town in the first season. Got hired by Eastbourne Borough the next season. And carried over to the following season. Got fired again. And then had to wait until the following year for the Halson job. We did gain promotion, winning the winning the league. So I do have some silverware to my name and manager of the month once this year. Uh, what was that, October? So last month. So I think we've reached the climax of our time here at Halson. I don't know where we're going to go. Let's just kind of take a real quick look at the job center. We should only be looking at head coach. Oh, no. Nope. Head coaching jobs. Thank you very much. I don't know why that doesn't save. No, not, not sure. Well, I guess we'll go here. There are quite a few available jobs. Uh, Stourbridge, Himmel, Hempstead Town over in the Vanarama. What's our... Uh, What's our profile look like? A little laggy there. So just one star. So we really haven't gained anything, right? That's disappointing. So, you know, one stars, maybe one and a quarter stars. Uh, you know, that's going to be the best we can hope for. Um, so, you know, we've got some Vanoramas. We've got uh, second division in Sweden. Um... Denmark, Iceland, uh, th those may those could be right at the fringe. Um, France, the Championnat National, 
third league in Germany. Yeah, I don't know. There's just, we don't have the reputation to move up. That's the problem. But I think we've still run our course. So we're going to go to the inbox. Um, we are going to accept the current vision. And then I'm going to go in and we are going to resign immediately. There we go. All right. So I am going to go in and apply for some jobs. And uh, we'll see... Uh, We'll see what comes up. So I will be back uh, with any interview news. And uh, those will probably be some short episodes. You know, we'll see how long it goes. I do want to make a note. Uh, we are November 8th of 2055. If you're just tuning in or if you've only tuned in recently, just remember I did sim ahead, uh, play ahead. I, I simulated ahead 30 years to get, uh, you know, some history and also uh with um you know just to get all the known players out of out out of there you know just so we weren't dealing with Messi's and Ronaldo's please hit the like button subscribe if you're new I uh, do appreciate all the comments all the interaction makes this much more fun to do uh hit the like button that's how you support the channel and get more eyes onto my videos uh, more likes by you equals more uh, suggestions by YouTube to potential viewers and gets more eyes onto my channel and my videos. Thank you very much for doing that. If you do it, and if you don't do it, still thank you for coming by and watching the episode. We will see you guys wherever we land next season. Take care, have a good one, and bye.